Hi guys, it is a wet, soggy, gloomy night here in the end times. I'm now in the paradise, the mosquito-plagued paradise of the Ocala National Forest outside of Silver Springs, Florida, where I hope to be here maybe for a week or so. And uh, it is now a gloomy Sunday night. What does that mean? February 3rd, 2019. And uh, since it is Sunday night, <coughs> I'm going to get back to doing what I try to do every Sunday night. Now, since I've figured out once again how to find Andy the Gardener's comments. Andy Gardener is now Andy the Gardener. So, anywho's here on Super Bowl Sunday, while the rest of the clueless fucking morons cheering on the multi-millionaires in tights of their choice, uh, I'm going to be doing back to doing what I try to do every Sunday, and that's bringing you our view from Zombie Island, where we check in with Andy the Gardener, who I assure you is not watching the Super Bowl last night, I mean tonight, not last night, right now. Uh, now I was going to end up with this comment. I was going to build towards this comment, but I've decided to lead off with it <coughs> for two or three reasons. Number one, I'm afraid global industrial civilization might collapse during Andy's rant, and I would never get to this comment or B, uh, just as likely 90% of the people would never stick around Andy's rant to the end. And number three, and most importantly, I think this pretty much, this could be Andy the Gardener's most on-point comment yet. Take it away, Andy the Gardener. <clears throat> I would happily starve to death for the pleasure of watching 70 million guilty as fuck car wankers and frequent flyers horribly starve to death. Most of them have not done one good thing in their lives. Confront them, it's clear they imagine themselves to be good, pleading innocence and ignorance. Put me in charge of the world. I will implement the EMP takedown of industrial civilization, which will kill most people on Earth. Yes, you heard me right. I would murder every fucking person on the planet. In return, I will shoot myself in the head. How is that for a bargain with the fucking devil? When I say I am an eco-Nazi, I'm not fucking joking. And I would do it to save just one innocent Peruvian stick insect species. Save one stick insect, you save the world. Sorry, I've just been reading Guardian climate change comments. The way the lefty humanitarian bleeding hearts jump on and bully anyone with the guts to say the truth, that rapid population control, both for the rich and poor, is necessary. It always reminds me how thick, lazy, intellectually cowardly, pathetic, and sheep-like humans are. <laughs> I think Andy should stop reading uh, the Guardian climate change uh, comments. I think we have another EMP comment uh, somewhere. Andy's been busy at the typewriter. Uh... Anyway, we'll get to it or we won't. I have a lot to get to. I'm just going to sit here and rant for uh, about 20 more minutes. Good God, Andy has been busy. So this is Andy Gardner. 
imagining Greta, Greta Funberg, as he calls her, as a Girl Scout. Greta Funberg, the Girl Scout. <clears throat> Greta Funberg should create her own brand of cookie time cookies as her next publicity stunt to get the insane global capitalist system that nobody owns to finally act on global warming. The box could show California getting roasted alive during next year's cookie time. Hambone, your scornful rant about Girl Scout cookies is absolutely fucking hilarious. So much tragic comedy can be found in making observations of the crass little details of ordinary things. And that is what I devote my life to, if you have not noticed, Andy, is noting is chronicling the tragic the tragic comedy from observing the crass little details of ordinary things it is those crass the devil is in the crass little details uh, I think I had some crass little detail about some goddamn baby flamingos being baked alive in their own eggs yesterday for a crass little detail. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> what is, you know, over there, the view from Zombie Island, we, you know, Andy likes to keep us, in case we're unaware of it, he likes to give us Guardian and BBC updates. Take it away. What's going on with the BBC? Well, if I can, uh, okay, we have a bit of breaking news from the BBC that Andy the Gardener would like to share with us. World leaders of capitalism decide to stop petty squabbles over who burns the last of the oil and make last-ditch effort to preserve what is left of rapidly vanishing wildlife in the tropical hot spots of biodiversity, such as Venezuela, before it all goes extinct forever. The right-wing, neoliberal, and leftist media and world religious leaders also agree that, quote, concentrating on trivial social and human-centric aspects of the USA's constant dabbling in the affairs of third world countries was just avoiding the really important long-term stuff going on there, close quote. And then the Pope uh, added his opinion, uh, quoting the Pope on the BBC, who gives a shit about some overpopulated fucking humans? They are all dead meat anyway when the oil that supports them all runs out and when they also get nuked by rising temperatures. It's the millions of species that actually matter because they are the long-term wealth of the planet. Individual humans will die in a few decades at most anyway, even in ideal circumstances. So are, in truth, totally expendable in comparison with species. In the past, we evaluated prioritized foolishly <coughs> and in an entirely short-term way, like silly children. But... With the help of pragmatic new damage limitation software, we are able to make better decisions requiring the pragmatic and appropriate sacrifices. Oh, I'm sorry, that was not the Pope. That was the new UN chief in talking candidly to the BBC. Mm -hmm. I went some of whatever Andy the Gardener is smoking. So, uh, what is Andy's view of YouTube, the YouTube top cops taking aim at fringe videos, what they call fringe videos? 
Sounds like a major robot control hub of the Mega Cancer is getting its booty smacked a little for sowing a little too much destabilizing dissent and confusion within the teetering, rapidly increasing, barely controlled global zombie substrata. But it's a very fine line to tread in a delicate balancing act which needs constant and careful automatic tweaking of algorithms. Although it doesn't know it, the mega cancer is torn between two mutually conflicting requirements. Primarily, a mindless techno cancer planet converse converting growth machine requires stability, harmony, and unity in a certain level of critical thinking and scientific competence to metabolically, metabolically function and grow. However, above a certain level, critical thinking becomes a dangerous liability consumer and worker units might stop being distracted by sex, sports, music, travel, and kitten videos, and start thinking for themselves, asking awkward questions, or even form into coherent mobs and start rallying against the cancer, against the cancer whole for their own individual factions interest. The mega cancer might start to disintegrate, and this must be prevented at all cost. So, the little control hub also needs to allow a certain amount of carefully regulated chaos, confusion, and disinformation within the zombie substrata to disorientate, create divisions, and thus allow the cancer to remain in control of the very chaotic and dynamic whole. The problem is that can also go too far. Currently, parts of the system are awakening. It's only a vague awareness of reality, but coherent dangerous factions are forming at the alt-right edges. <clears throat> the yellow vest taxi driving hordes are becoming a very real problem, not to mention those pesky extinction rebellion scientific types from the mega cancer training institutions. Something needs to be done. Answer? Tweak the algorithms of the robot control hub. The mega cancer isn't happy with the spreading of yellow vest ideology and neoliberalist doubt. It won't do much, though. It doesn't need to. The core zombie mentality of the masses will always shine through. It just needs a nudge in the right direction, just tweak a little here and there, a little homeostasis. YouTube is a very useful tool that is generally good for global growth, increasing metabolism of resources, and control. The mega cancer certainly does not want to kill the goose that lays the golden egg. There you go. So I figured Andy would have some uh, comment about Chris Martinson. He kept it pretty brief. <clears throat> he nails it on everything. Enough said. Now, where do I sign up? Looks like I need to improve my investment portfolio quickly if I'm to really capitalize fully on the apocalypse. I'm thinking maybe sell the oil stocks and get into rare earth metals? Uh, let's see, what is Andy's opinion of the MGTOW movement? I don't know or care what MGTOW stands for or any other half-baked, fashionable, internet meme drivel acronym. 
and I'm not looking it up on Google to find out either. I've got better, th better things to do with my life, like 99.99% .99 of all other homo saps. I'm a falmaoc, fucking obsessed with myself above all other concerns. Yes. Uh, what is... His, uh, this is his response on my drive through Miami Beach. It's actually pretty funny looking at how much humans have managed to build up on a finite energy battery bubble. So much restraint, such forward planning, meaning building these giant uh, walls of condos on this little spit of sand about a foot above sea level. Also, if you look at the entire tree of life, humans are quite closely related to vegetables, just a couple of probably unrelated observations. And uh, this is uh, Andy congratulating fellow tribes member TCR Galaxy for calling out car wankers. If I can, uh, it's a, it's great you spoke to those drivers. I call it the rabbit in the headlines reaction. You totally break a societal taboo asking humans why they still think it's okay to be still driving, flying, or breeding. <clears throat> they have no defense prepared in their circuits because they usually have never had to defend themselves before. I think a great project for the end times would be to simply go around with a camera confronting clueless fucking morons, asking them awkward questions. <clears throat> it would be funny as hell. I'm thinking of along the lines of an eco-Nazi Nazi version of Dennis Penis, i.e. a totally rude, annoying, Woody Allen-style asshole character. I've done it a few times, and I must admit, the end result was not very pretty, but it was educational, and it does need to be done for historical purposes, and more importantly, for entertainment purposes. Okay, Andy has the obvious explanation for the shrinking size of Wendy's Frosties. I think the explanation for the declining scale of frosty portions is that Wendy's is just making an extremely subtle and clever political statement about the shrinking size of real frosty up in the Arctic and Greenland. They are just trying to get all their customers to consider the big picture of shrinking amounts of global ice with every purchase. This is certainly plausible, looking at the powerful environmental precedents set by McDonald's, Burger King, and all major fast food corporations. And my response to uh, Andy's theory of the shrinking Wendy's Frosty is, or they're trying to fuck clueless morons out of a dollar for a dime's worth of goop. All right. Uh, Andy once again weighing in on the timeline, the famous timeline being debated in the Doomosphere. Well, if you want my humble opinion, I predict the year 2040 will happen. There will be a lot of people, lots of things will happen, and those things will be mostly very, very horrible. There you go. That is the best prediction for 2040 I have ever seen. Okay. This is Andy's comment on my comment that women do not produce three and a half billion solutions. Women produce three and a half billion problems. This is Andy 
weighing on with the problem of women. <clears throat> when they are done buying their endless package holidays, houses, handbags, shoes, clothes, makeup, and cute little BMW minis, millennial women will produce their ultimate piece de resistance, their very own replacements. As if they had not done enough vacuous, mindless damage already, there will be billions of babies produced in one vast hydrogen bomb like explosions of human procreation, the last fatal human generation. Let the planet-eating final doubling begin. The once-living planet is being hollowed out by humans. What habitats remain might look okay at a cursory glance, but they are just empty shells. And uh, this is Andy's response to my view of the dead mangrove forest in the Everglades National Park. Naming it the Everglades was a bit presumptuous. It doesn't look very shady glady in your videos anymore. More like a napalm. This is actually talking about the, uh, the mangroves at the southern edge of the uh, River of Grass. <clears throat> it doesn't look very shady glady in your video anymore. More like a napalmed or chemically defoliated forest in Asia. Maybe because it's winter. But shouldn't there be some leaves on those trees? No, it's winter. That's the explanation. It's not a subtropical region. They are not dead. They are sleeping, and their habitat is still alive. That habitat looks as healthy as British woodland, with its black, lifeless conifers and invasive understory of rhododendrons and plastic bottles. But it's woodland. There are a few birds flying about, and therefore probably normal. I can't remember what it's supposed to look like. What I do know is there's always a road nearby with its incessant roar of cars to remind you. There is no escaping the throat grip that industrial civilization and the plague of hard-working, cheering, clueless fucking moron simpletons have on every aspect of the biosphere. At least mangroves are thriving in some places. Go into any built-up area of the mega cancer and you will be in a mangrove swamp, literally wading through thick groves of impenetrable, teeming humanity. There you go. Do I have time to get into his review of Chris Hedges. What is Andy's, how does he feel about UV radiation? Take it away, Andy the gardener. I wouldn't worry. It, meaning UV radiation, doesn't seem to have dented human fertility, even in sunny countries where people are outside all day, sunlight bombarding their delicate gonads. I am sure the mega cancer will freak when there is even a tiny drop in human fertility and we will be given incentives to pop the desired number of babies to fulfill that year's growth targets. Well, well Andy, I, I, I don't know if you're being ironic, but we are there. Uh, if you obviously haven't noticed... Okay, are we or are we not so fucked, Andy the Gardener? <clears throat> we were fucked from the beginning. Science held the truth 
Unfortunately, scientists are geeks, not warriors. They were always going to get sand kicked in their faces by the macho jocks of industry, unflinching hard cases like us, not necessarily scientists, but Vinnie Jones-like enforcers, unafraid to cause a bit of pain and upset a few apple carts, were required to get the job done. Okay. Expecting to adapt. This is talking about these about how we're going to adapt to climate change. Expecting to adapt to an unhinged Gaia is like James Bond asking an unhinged supervillain if he expected him to talk. Us. So, you expect us to adapt, Gaia. No, I expect you to die. All right, but we are going to end with Andy Gardner's weighing in on Chris Hedges. Chris Hedges uh, in his Truth Dig rant, there will be nothing we can do to halt obliteration. <clears throat> Take it away, Andy, to wrap up this rant. Although I 100% agree with Chris Hedges' conclusions about the future of civilization and admire him greatly for his excellent writing and powerful dark descriptions of our predicament, I still find it funny that a man who believes in the God of the Bible and Jesus, which is perhaps the ultimate religion of death and counter to all we know about the universe, can feel justified criticizing industrial civilization for being the culture of death, especially as the Enlightenment and Industrial Revolution that followed was pretty much based on identical human-centric values, central to which are human exceptionalism and utilitarian domination of nature. There is no concept of sinning against nature in the Bible or punishment for it. Just as in our secular world dominated by corporate overlords, there is no punishment for driving a car, having a child, booking a flight to Benidorm, or reducing an entire rainforest to burnt stumps. The problem with industrial civilization is, like its similarly delusional roots, it holds sacred a particular and esoteric obsession with human life above all creation, and both are really about all about death denial, held entirely against all reason and on faith, which, rather than being a good thing, as Hedges claims, is a form of evil reality denial and avoidance of responsibility. Growth eternal and life after death are both human-centric faith-based concepts that attempt to escape the hideous confines of the natural world, both species of delusion have built into them a total disdain of creation. Christianity essentially tells us all we experience that all we experience in the world is a lie and has no value. Only the kingdom of heaven and that sort of life has value. The mega cancer and the Bible evilly view nature only in terms of its practical use to humans. Just as both capitalism and socialism put the environment and other species last of all, it's <clears throat> into last of all concerns only there to be converted to human life and feed the resulting billions of human humans endless goodies. Both have no concept of the sacredness of the living system or respect for science and knowledge.
There is absolutely nothing in the Bible that orders humans to value life on earth, preserve the earth, live sustainably, or control our numbers. The Bible is sort of an early manual operating system of the mega cancer built out of the never questioned, self serving, rigid hardwiring of the wormy brains of humans. Sadly, Chris Hedges will always be a rare exception within religion because most religious people are selfish, clueless fucking morons who don't give a flying fuck about creation or the future and really only care about sucking up to their sky fairy savior and saving their eternal ass. I note the church car parks, otherwise known as parking lots, I note the church parking lots are always full. <laughs> there you go, Andy. I think you've managed to pretty much insult everybody on the planet in uh, tonight's view from Zombie Island from Andy the Gardener. Oh, uh, anyway, I'm going to, I got to get back to the Super Bowl party just up the road to see who's winning the Super Bowl. We are so fucked. Enjoy the Super Bowl while you still can. Bye, guys. Well, how do I turn this damn thing off?